to fit a piezo pickup and preamp into an acoustic guitar. Right, today we're going to be fitting this uh, piezo pickup uh, and all its associated hardware, that's the output plug uh, with a battery compartment for the preamp and here's the preamp with a tuner built into it and stuff. Um, and this particular model has got a microphone that attaches to the back of it as well. Uh, so the first thing we're going to need to do is cut the hole for the preamp. So uh, I, I want to fit it here so I can adjust it whilst I'm playing. The width is right, we just have to adjust it for the curve. So the first thing we have to do before we start anything is to uh, cover the area we want to work with with uh, masking tape uh, this kind of stuff that you use for painting uh, don't try using gaffer tape or anything like that because you can't get it off once you get it on uh, this will peel off without damaging the paintwork uh, I'm going to put this over the area I want to uh, fit the thing the preamp but overlap it well and truly I mean it's better to have too much on than too little uh, we're going to cover the whole of this side. That will do. This is well more than we need because we're only going to be working in this particular area here. About there. Yeah, I reckon. So, next stage is it's got to fit in with the curve. So, we're going to have to uh, work out what part of the guitar better fits in with this curve here. So let's do that now. We need to decide how best to make this fit in with the curve of the guitar. So the best bet is to go behind the guitar and just move it along until you get the points where it fits most comfortably to the guitar. Obviously you don't want the edges sticking up and you don't want a big gap in the middle. So there should be a point at which the curves of the uh, preamp fit quite nicely with the actual guitar and I think with this one that's the place so then we're going to mark it I'll mark it both ends but I'll I'll only rule across one end so that looks about right now I'm going to mark that with the ruler properly and then um, rip, test it's correct again so let's do that first here's the ruler now where I've done that mark let's take that of course, this, this particular bit, it doesn't have to be millimetre accurate. You're just getting about where it's going to fit. Uh, so it doesn't have to be exact, exact. So let's just get that across there. And we've got two lines there, which theoretically, one of them should line up with well and fit into the curve of the guitar. So let's just try dropping that in place again. And it does work perfectly there. That's great good. When measuring the preamp it's important not to measure the outside size. You must measure the inside. If you were to cut the hole to the size of the outside obviously the preamp would fall into the hole. I find it's a good idea to do a test on a piece of paper. By using the measurements of the preamp to cut a hole in a piece of paper you can not only eliminate any errors, but you can create a template that you can use later on the guitar. Right, to cut this, I'm going to use this, a multi-tool. Uh, always remember, cut inside the lines, um, and uh, just take your time. Uh, if, if you hurry, you'll end up ruining the job. So here we go. Um, Turn the guitar around to make sure I've got a good angle uh, so I don't make any mistakes. Don't worry about the smoke, that's just because the sawdust gets so hot. Uh, right, I'm going to cut the two side ones now. I'm going to turn the cameras off for that because I can't get the angles. Uh, 
Right, once we've cut the hole, uh, it's a good idea just to finish it with something like uh, I, I'm using these I use for everything, uh, diamond files, uh, just, just clean up the edges, just to uh, save yourself getting splinters, but it's not necessary, uh, unless you've got any rough edges, but yeah, next thing is we, we do want to try the uh, preamp in there, just to check it fits, where is it gone, there we go, right, drop the wire in, check it's the right way up, Indeed it is. Well, all of that isn't. Oh yes, it does. It's a very tight fit, but hey, that's better than a loose fit. That's that's brilliant. There we go. And now that is, that's that's perfect. Uh, once this is is ready and you know it's going to fit, you're ready to fit the output socket. You don't want to fit this all the way in and then take it back out whilst you're still working on the guitar. And then we'll put all the electrics in at the end. Uh, next thing is we need to decide where we're going to fit the output socket. Um, to be quite honest, there's no science like this. Some people fit the um, preamp on this side. I prefer this side. The, the output socket and the battery uh, can go anywhere around the bottom of the guitar. Now we'll just go and have a look at that now. Where the output socket fits depends on two things. One, your preferred choice of position. And two, where the curvature of the part fits and you can see this is curved in the same way as the uh, preamp so it's going to fit at specific points on the uh, side of the guitar now my choice my preferred place is higher close to the strap if i can uh, i don't like the lead dangling down i like it to go through the strap so uh, i would not like that but I would prefer that, so that, that's the sort of area I'm going to go for. So what I'll do is tape it up as before, so we don't damage the paintwork, and I'm going to run it round until I find a point where all the sides are touching as closely as possible, and then I'll mark it up ready for cutting. So there's the insulation tape on, or the sorry masking tape on, uh, ready to be um, ready to be drawn on, ready to mark up the side. So next thing I'm going to do is run this round and find the perfect point just mark that one line make sure i get it the right way up uh, so let's do that now you can see here there's not much play on this one uh, furthest i can get it up to the way i like it is about uh, the, about there uh, so it looks like that's about where it's going to have to go so I, i'm just going to mark that quickly so i can see where i've got to go from Again, I recommend you using the measurements on a piece of paper or a piece of card in order to test the whole size is correct. You can use this piece of paper or card as a template later to make sure you don't make any mistakes, because obviously you don't want to ruin the guitar. So there we go, once we cut this hole, uh, we just, uh, we've just we filed it the same way as I did the other one with the, the dime file, and we just check that it's going to fit in alright. And again, it does with a bit of nudging. There we go. Perfect. And that will uh, screw into place. So again, we don't put it in permanently yet. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll put the piezo under the bridge. The vast majority of pickups on these acoustic guitars are piezo pickups and they live under the bridge. And it's just this little strip here. Now, uh, when you remove the bridge, be sure to keep it the right way around. Uh, if you put it back back to front, it'll affect intonation and so on. Uh, so, we have to have a hole uh, big enough for this plug to fit through. Uh, this plug will fit into the back of the preamp. Uh, however, in the case of this guitar, it's already got a piezo in it. So, I'm just going to dig out the wires from that. And would you believe it's the same fitment? So there's no need to replace this piezo, but I'm going to do it anyway. I've got a new piezo, so let's go with it anyhow. Actually, the new preamp, the, the new one, it looks the same, make, But like I say, I'm going to replace it because the, uh, this new pickup is the one that is specifically matched to the preamp, so it should theoretically sound better. There we go, that should slot straight in. There we go, straight in. Simple as that. Uh, normally you would have to drill the hole. 
this, and it's always on the base side for some reason. Uh, so you, 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 you find the space at the end and just drill that hole. Now, let's just set it's the same height. So now the next thing we need to do is um, put in the preamp and connect everything up. So we need to bring the wire from this through to the preamp hole, bring that wire around and out of this hole. Now this is where it needs to go for the time being, uh, but I do need to remove the uh, insulator piece, masking tape now, because otherwise I won't be able to get the uh, get it off once I've got the uh, preamp in place. This will actually plug into the back of the preamp. So what I need to do is also thread this this wire here threads through to the output socket on the other side. So we thread that in to the hole where we can get it, and then we plug this in the back here. It's simple. It's a simple jack plug socket arrangement. Uh, can you see that there? So and I just plug that in. The dirt. Now, as I said earlier, this one's a strange one. It's actually got a microphone. Right, you can see here the microphone uh, plugs in the back. Uh, I've never actually used one of these before, so I assume we can adjust this from the hole. So we now thread all of this slot into place. Have I got it right way up? No, I haven't. So let's turn that microphone around. And carefully make sure we don't trap any of the wires. Slot it into place. Very good. Da -da. Okay. Now, once we've connected the, the piezo up, uh, and we've, we have this wire here that has to go to the output, so putting our hand in the hole, you can literally thread it through. You can put your hand right inside, providing you've got fairly thin, and uh, bring it out of the hole where the output socket will be. You literally just make sure you've got the, the side that's got the two cutouts, and just slot it in, and it locks in place and that's connected. I had a question mark with this. You can have it two ways really. You can have it that way if you want with the battery at the back and the sockets at the front or you can have it that way with the, the, the battery at the front and the sockets at the back. Now I decided to go that way because the the plugs will be less obvious and less visible from the front so it just look nicer though I do take it around the strap lock anyway but um, so that's how I'm going to fit it but whichever way you do it, it it's there's no set rule it's what's most useful to you it's worth pointing out that I'd never actually uh, drill the holes in for uh, the screws these are far too small uh, and if you drill them you, you lose any purchase the easiest and safest way to do it is actually make sure it's mounted in place all the parts this applies uh, bottom well, and just pierce through the varnish using uh, something like a, a file or a punch and that will start the screw off and then you just uh, literally just screw straight in to that so let's there we go and make sure the screw is straight and always with all these guitar things with plastic involved never never over tighten just get enough so it, you know it's secure you know it's not as, it's not going to take any stress so if you over tighten you just crack the plastic that's the biggest danger there you go see and the, the uh, no drilling necessary do another one now so I've just marked that screw Right, yeah. Right, and just do the others and the ones for the thing, and then I'll put the strings on and we can test it. Something I forgot to mention, it's uh, really hard to show it on video, so I'll just show you on the surface of the guitar. You get this uh, this um, mounting point, with a, it's got two sided sticky bud on the back, so you, you peel it and it'll stick to the inside of the guitar, uh, and a rip tie. And what we do is we, we put the rip tie through this, 
like so. And then we'd put the riptide around the wires in the guitar and we'd mount them to a secure place. This is to prevent vibration and just keep them tidy so you can't see them through the hole. Uh, so once you've done this it, it is finished. Uh, well you have to do this obviously before you put the strings on. Uh, obviously once you put your strings on it's too late to get your hand inside so you just feel around and find a good place where you, you think it would mount and uh, mount it there. You can see here the results look really neat and professional and I'm very pleased with the sound as well. It's worth mentioning however one thing I did do was upgrade the provided microphone with a slightly better one off eBay. This was really easy to do because the fitment is a standard mini jack and most microphones these days are provided with that fitment. So here's what it sounds like going straight through my mixing desk using the XLR output. Enjoy. <laughs> 